here we go for point four logarithmic and exponential equations. Essentially, if you're going to be solving logarithmic equations, you're probably going to be solving exponential equations at the same time here. Okay, so a couple of important things. You have to be able to go back and forth between an exponential function. So say, for example, 2 to the power of x is equal to 10. Okay, uh, what you need to be able to do is convert this into log form. So log base 2 of 10 is equal to x, right? And this is how we solve for exponents, right? That's the whole idea behind logarithms is that we can solve for uh, the exponent. So you have to be comfortable going back and forth, all right? Uh, a couple other things here is that um, if you have a to the x and uh, a to the y, okay, uh, this is true if and only if x is equal to y, okay? Uh, another thing, if you have log base uh, a of x uh, equaling log base a of y. This is again true if and only if x is equal to y. Okay, or you can say x is equal to y if you end up in this situation, right? So if you have the same base, then those things have to be the same. Just like if you have the same base, those exponents have to be the same. Okay, so that's uh, a few things that you have to be able to do. Convert back and forth. Understand that if you have the same base, the exponents are the same. And if you have the same base, then the logs are the same as well. Right? So those are three very important points when you are solving exponential equations. So these uh, are, we're going to be dealing with exponential and logarithmic growth. Right? Those are the equations that we're going to deal with when we start doing applications. You're going to be making or be given equations and have to solve them. So this is just practice to get to that point, though. Okay? Uh, check for checking for extraneous roots, roots that do not work, is a valuable uh, thing to understand as well because. Uh, remember that if you have log base b of x now, uh, b has to be greater than 0 and x has to be greater than 0 as well, right? And then b can't be 1. So we have a few restrictions here. If these either of these values end up being uh, negative, then it's an extraneous root. Uh, again, if you want to look for the reasons behind why uh, we have these restrictions, uh, look at a graph. Uh, if you quickly look at a graph, boom, this is your log function. X has to be greater than zero. Okay, and uh, notice our base. Well, that's a different, whole different topic. Let's just uh, move on to these things. So one of the things that we do is we can log both sides. You know that from basic algebra, whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. Well, that premise still counts here, okay? Uh, here's a couple of examples. If you want to solve this, okay, what we do is we... Uh, well, you can log, there's two ways you can do this, actually. You can log both sides. You can go log um, of 2 to the power of x is equal to log 8, okay? Uh, you know this exponent comes out, so you can go log 2 is equal to log 8. Then you can say, okay, x is equal to log 8 over log 2. Hold on just a second. I'm going to get my calculator. There it is. So here we're going to get an answer, uh, and what we do is we go log 8, enter, divided by log 2, enter, uh, and you get a value of 3. And it actually kind of makes sense here. What we can do here, too, is look at this. If you have log uh, 8 over log 2, think of the change of base, right? That would be log base 2 of 8. And that means that 2 to the power of 3 is 8. So there's lots of different ways that you can look at this. Uh, here we log both sides. Okay, to solve it, here what we can do is actually uh, just turn it into log form, right? Log base 3 of 11 is equal to x. What we can do now is we can um, do a change of base. So log 11 over log 3 is equal to x. And from there, we just use our calculators. Uh, and we go log 11 divided by log 3, and we get a value of 2.18. All right? So uh, my pencils are all busted. There we go. This one. So x is equal to 2.18. All right? Um, but, so what you're going to see is lots of different ways of solving these things, okay? Now let's have a look um, at some others here. So solving these by using the rules of logarithms. Well, in this case here, what we're going to do is you see that they're being added. So you're going to have log of x plus 3 times x is equal to 1. So log of x squared plus 3x is equal to 1. And what we can do now is we can convert this uh, into log form, right? So the base here is 10, 
right? So 10 to the power of 1 is equal to x squared plus 3x. Uh, make it equal to 0. Uh, minus 10. Factor it out. x plus 5. x minus 2. You're going to get two solutions. x is equal to negative 5 and positive 2. What we need to do now is actually go back into the... Uh, equation and see if they work. If I put a, a minus 5 in here, the original equation, minus 5 plus 3 would be negative 2, minus 5 here, boom. So this is what we call an extraneous root. Does 2 work? 2 plus 3 is 5? Yeah, that works. So the answer really is just x equals 2 because minus 5 is extraneous. Okay? Let's move over to this one here. Uh, log x, okay, so minus base 3, okay, so we've got a couple things going on here. So what we're going to do is log base 3, and we're going to go x plus 6 over x plus 2 is equal to log base 3 of x. And then what we can see is, using that premise, that if you have the same base, then these things are equivalent. So now you just have x plus 6 over x plus 2 is equal to x. And now we simply solve it uh, using algebra, okay? x squared plus x minus 6, another quadratic that we have to factor, and you end up with x is negative 3 and positive 2. So you check your answers, and you put it in here. You can see here right away that x can't be negative 3, okay, but it can be 2. So this is my extraneous root. Again, you have x is equal to 2, all right? So we're seeing that there are a variety of different techniques, this one being quadratic, you end up with a quadratic, you have to solve it just like we did before, checking for extraneous roots because we have inherent restrictions built into a log function, right? So here, uh, first step, we might want to put the squared up here, right? Put the squared up here and then realize that those are going to get multiplied together and you're going to have something on the other side there as well. Um, this is one of those questions that becomes a little trickier. Let's see. So um, log base 3 of what I'm going to have is x squared times x minus 1 is equal to 1 plus log base 3 of 2x. Now, what are we going to do here? Okay, so what we can do is maybe bring this log over here. So log base 3 of, uh, oh yeah, look, if you bring this over here, yeah, we can combine the whole thing. Sorry, it took me a while there. Uh, so if I go log base 3 of x squared times x minus 1 minus log base 3 of 2x is equal to 1. Now I can combine these. Oof. You see, it takes a while sometimes to see it. So x squared times x minus 1 over 2x, right, is equal to 1. And then what we can do is convert it into exponential form, right? So uh, 3 to the power of 1 is equal to x squared times x minus 1 over 2x. Right? Now you multiply this out, you're going to get 6x is equal to x squared times x minus 1. Now you can maybe see why I didn't multiply it out all the way all the time, because now this x can take away one of those, and what you're left with is uh, 6 equals x squared minus x. Gives you, uh, oh, look at that, 0 is equal to x squared minus x minus 6, and what we end up with again is a quadratic. Okay, where x minus 3, x plus 2, so x is equal to 3 and negative 2. And we go back to the original equation, which is way up here. And you can see that negative 2 won't work. So that is extraneous. My answer is x equals 3 is the only one I'm going to have, all right? So yeah, that's a drawn out one. And notice it took me a few minutes to figure that out as well, all right? So let's have a look at another one here. Uh, oh, we just did that one. Kind of confused me. That square doesn't belong there. Here, let's have a look at this one. Ah, so, what do we do with this? Well, we can turn it into log form, right? Uh, it's in exponential form. So, how will we go log base of x of 100x is equal to, don't like that pencil anymore, um, is equal to log x. Okay? Now, um, what am I looking at? 
Oh, we, let's do change of base here. How about log of 100x over log x is equal to log x? Mmm, this is going to be one of those weird ones. Oh, I think I see where we go now. So this is going to x. Multiply this out. This is going to be log x all squared, right? Two being multiplied. Log 100 plus log x is equal to log x all squared. Another thing that you can remember here, log x all squared, that looks the same as this, log squared x, okay? It is not this, okay, because that exponent comes out front. So these two are the same. That's different. So I like this one better. It makes a little bit more sense, especially when you see what's going to happen right now, because this is going to be log x all squared minus log x uh, minus 100. And the idea here is that we have to factor this now. Um, oh wait, log 100. But um, we need to look at something here. Uh, can we convert any of these things into a number? Hopefully you can see that this one equals a 2 because 10 to the power of 2. So what you have is log x squared minus log x minus 2. And what we have, oh, this is still there, it's still there, okay, um, is a situation, basically it looks like this, okay, but you got logs instead of log x, so if you can factor this, okay, you can factor this, log x minus 2, and then log x plus 1, all right, and then we look at each of these individual logs, and you get log x is equal to 2, and you get log x is equal to negative 1, uh, so what you see there then is that 10 to the power of 2 is equal to x, so 100 equals x. 10 to the power of negative 1 uh, is equal to x, so 0 0.1 is equal to x. Um, now we need to check both answers, and 100 minus 2 point... Uh, this one doesn't look like it works, because point... Oh no, it does. Whatever. It's not... Uh, yeah, yeah, no, they both work. Absolutely. So uh, there we go. Let's see if there's another one. Okay, one last question I'm going to do for you. Okay, let's have a quick look at this one. Uh, a little trickier maybe. Hold on. Okay, so 3.2, 3 times 2. To the, okay, so what are we going to do here? Mm, we can log both sides. So let's go log of 3 times uh, 2 to the power of x minus 2 is equal to log 6 of x. Now, we can split these up now, right? Uh, this is going to be log 3 plus log 2 to the x minus 2. Let's go x log 6. Oops, x log 6. Now, uh, we can take the x minus 2 down from the front. So this is going to be, or from the, to the front, log 3 plus, and then this is going to be x minus 2 onto log of 2 is equal to x log 6. Now, in this case, yes, we can multiply these out because um, just, okay, so this is x times that, so it's x log 2 minus 2 log 2 is equal to x log 6. We're expanding it as much as we can. Uh, notice that these are actually going to be values now, right? And we've got a bunch of x's here. So um, what we can do, let's, we need to isolate the x. We've seen situations like this before. Uh, let's isolate the x by putting all the x's on one side. So uh, minus 2 log 2 is equal to x log 6 uh, minus x log 2. So where we're at now is trying to finish this off here, okay? Uh, this will actually be a value. Let's leave that. Let's see what we can do here. This is going to be x times log 6 minus log 2. So if you actually want to solve for x, you divide by that. You divide that side by that. So you're going to get log 3 minus 2 log 2 all over uh, log 6 minus log 2. And what you would do is simply do that on your calculator. Okay? You'd simply go log 3 uh, minus 2 log 2. Notice I'm closing the brackets. Boom. Divided by. Now I'm going to go log 6 uh, minus log 2, close that bracket, close the bracket again, boom, and negative 2.6, okay, or negative 0.26.
Uh, that is a small sample of log equations and uh, exponential equations. The only way you're going to get this, folks, is just keep practicing them, okay? Uh, there's tons in your books. I will have extra sheets for you, extra practice. Make sure you ask me questions. You notice that I find uh, it takes a little bit of time to figure out which path to take as well, okay? So be patient, be persistent, and good luck.